Welcome to the review of the Xiaomi Redmi Note 10 Pro. Is this the best entry-level mid-range device ever? Let's find out. The Redmi Note 10 Pro comes in a grippy, thin plastic housing with a glass back and glass front. Clickable buttons on the right side with a power button that acts like a fingerprint reader. Both buttons work quite good. I had no issues with the fingerprint reader. On the top of the device we find something that seems to be extinct in many flagship devices, but still the standard in mid-range devices. A headphone jack. This one produces the typical output that you can expect from an inbuilt headphone adapter in the mid-range. It is good enough, but flagships like the LG V60 or the Xperia 1 Mark II offer a bit better sound with the headphone jack. What else is there? A speaker? Yeah, at the top edge. As this phone comes with stereo speakers and offers the same speaker also on the bottom edge. Next to it, you'll find a microphone and an infrared light. At the bottom, we have the main microphone and the USB Type-C port that sadly only supports 2.0 speed. Not a bummer, but come on, we have 2021, why not 3.1 support? The front is one of the highlights of the Note 10 Pro. And I'm not talking about the 16 megapixel camera hole in the top middle that weirdly has a silver ring around it. No, I'm talking about the 6.67 inch 120Hz HDR10 capable AMOLED screen. This one can get pretty bright with 1200 nits max, so you don't have any issues reading anything on the device, even in brighter daylight. Let's come to the bag, the glass bag, with the gradient bronze and matte finish, which looks really, really beautiful. It is not getting too much fingerprints and the Redmi NCE markings are not disturbing too much. The big bump for the camera system is housed in a two-layer sandwich containing the extra sensors plus flash on the lower area and the four main camera sensors on the higher area. Let's talk camera. The main camera has an outstanding 108 megapixels on a pretty large 1 over 152 inch sized sensor, which results in a pretty good shot in daylight and even can keep up in darker situations, though it is missing OIS there that could help even more. The ultra wide 8 megapixel is not outstanding at all. It's the typical camera for a mid-range device. The 5 megapixel macro shooter is not useless like all the others in the same price region. The 2 megapixel depth sensor, however, is something well just to be able to tell people we have four cameras on the back. In terms of video, it is mainly a full HD camera. Even though the camera can shoot 4K, it does not do this with stabilization, so only shoot 4K in great quality when having it on a tripod. The front camera cannot shoot full uh, K at all, only full HD 30 frames per second. If you want to see more about the camera, please take a look at my camera review where I talk in more detail with a lot of more sample shots what is possible with this camera system. Let's come to the software and yeah, Xiaomi ships the device with MIUI 12, which comes with the usual tweaks and overhaul of the Android 11 system. So you get the typical xiaomi fight Android experience with a new multitask view, and cleanup tools as well as battery saving modes and so on. Xiaomi also ships the device with some of its own tools like gallery, there's a music application, there is a file manager and there's a Mi video application amongst others. Under more apps it gives you also some pre-installed apps that I would consider bloatware. It's not extensive but still a bit unnecessary to have Amazon, Facebook and TikTok and all this other stuff installed out of the box. Talking about a bit of bloatware, why do we have free web browsers installed? Besides the Xiaomi Mi browser, there's also Chrome and then they also have Opera installed. 
By the way, Xiaomi Mi Browser, don't use it. It is like spying by default if you don't turn certain settings off. Most of the apps you can remove, but the Mi Browser, for example, you cannot remove. After installing apps, uh, Xiaomi initiates a virus scan, which indeed sometimes might make sense, though why after the installation uh, raises a few questions, as it takes a few minutes away of your time and then also yeah, it shows some advertisements prominently in the middle of the screen. Is this really necessary? Do we need this to get the cheaper price of the device? What do you think? Write it down in the comment section. In general, the audio of the speakers is pretty good. A bit of lacking in terms of bass, but it gets pretty loud evenly on each side. For mid-ranger in under the 300 euro price category, it performs above average and can beat even some of the phones in the 400 to 500 euro price range, which is pretty awesome. GPS and navigation runs solid and also Bluetooth headsets work fine and with white wine level 1 you can enjoy Netflix, Amazon Prime and Co. in full HD quality. When it comes to calls the device runs fine as well, no issues I noticed there. The Snapdragon 732G in general performs good in everyday usage. Apps run fluid even with 120Hz, though sometimes I can notice the frame rate dropping a bit lower, which I don't have in comparison with my Xperia 5's 120Hz display, which is constantly running smooth. Games like Genshin Impact run fluid most of the time without big issues and make a lot of fun, especially with the stereo speaker setup. With all this playing around, how is battery life? You cannot go wrong with the 50-20 mAh battery. And how the hell did they get this 50-20 mAh battery in this slim design? And it's not really heavy. You can get around two days on normal usage, one and a half day if you heavily use the device and even more if you don't use the device much. And this all with the 120 Hz display refresh rate which is super super fast and quick you can get even more out of it if you change the refresh rate to 60 hertz but spoiler alert you don't really want to change the refresh rate to 60 hertz only charging is pretty fast as well with the 33 watt charger included in the box 30 minutes charges your device around 50 percent in terms of battery life, screen on time for me is around 10 to 11 hours with 120 hertz, which is pretty awesome as well. Let's come to the free software indicator, which evaluates from 0 to 10 how freedom loving a product is. 0 would be not at all, and 10 GNU Stormen approved. The Xiaomi Redmi Note 10 Pro gets a 6 out of 10 points. With the capability to open up the bootloader, the device is open to future manufacturer independent software updates. Source code of the system is available as well. Drivers and firmware, however, remain closed source. The Redmi Note 10 Pro does better than some other devices in this regard, but it is still a step behind, for example, Sony, which also offers an open device program to help third-party systems to be ported on their devices. All in all, I like the Xiaomi Redmi Note 10 Pro because it's a slim device, it is lightweight, feels good in the hand despite the very large screen of 6.67 inch and of course this gorgeous uh, back, golden bronze back looks just astonishing. It is a bit cheaper here and there so you get a plastic frame but you have to think the price you get so many premium features on this device and for this price point 
it's just unbeatable, I would say. So well done, Xiaomi. What could you really improve on this uh, Xiaomi Redmi Note 10 Pro? I don't know. Maybe really this plastic frame being a metal frame. Uh, maybe like the always on screen really being always on and not turning off after a few seconds. Let's see it. But in general, what is it that you can improve on such a device? Maybe the processor. So if the processor would be a 765G from last year, then I think this would be even unbeatable. But then you are already in a territory where upper mid-range devices or entry-level flagship devices begin. And for 250 euros in Spain and some other European countries and here in Germany 280 euros, you cannot really expect flagship. But here Xiaomi says, yeah, you can, at least in the camera territory and the stereo dual speakers, you get some kind of entry-level flagship or at least higher mid-range specs despite the very low entry-level mid-range price. Would you improve on the Xiaomi Redmi Note 10 Pro? Better ultra-wide angle camera? Maybe? Just write it down in the comment section. That is everything for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have some comments, questions, you can ask them in the comment section. Until the next time, bye.